Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continue to write and divide the word of the truth. And there again, I'd like to welcome all YouTubers, anybody, social media, viewing past, present, or Lord willing, future videos. Now, today, or in this study, and of course, this is also uh, July the 10th or Sunday, it'd be the first day of the week. Uh, I want to talk to you, of course, uh, we're, we're continuing on the teaching or Paul's teaching that we bring in the, the, the blessed hope or how he uses hope 50-something uh, times in his epistles. Uh, also, the, which, the resurrection of the first fruits, the resurrection of the dead. Uh, this is what was preached. This is what was taught. And uh, it's just, as we know, it's been covered up and... Uh, Last video I showed you about Paul's teaching to Ephesus about the wolves coming in, Peter's teaching to his assemblies about the uh, damnable heresies that would be coming in because they denied the one, the Holy One, that bought them, that purchased them when he died on the tree. Now for, for a lot of people, that, uh, or for some people that might be viewing or coming across some of these videos, on YouTube might not have heard any of these things that I'm talking about. So, but we're going to give the scriptures and definitions, and so a lot of people have their study tools. You need some study tools, or you need the Bible that you use uh, that you can follow along when I put these verses up. Uh, so it's very, very important. But we're going to talk. We're we're going to talk in in this by in this study. You've got a, the rapture. I mean, that is, I guess, probably the biggest thing that's being taught now, of course, is the Antichrist and all that, but is the rapture. A lot of people believe in the seven-year tribulation and the rapture, and so you see that more and more because things are heating up. And, and some of these uh, so-called rapture teachers uh, thinking that you know it can happen any minute and uh, they're becoming under a lot of pressure because there is going to be a catching away people there go there is going to be a harpizo in the Greek a snatching out but that is not going to come until the two witnesses are killed you see that's I mean we've talked about that many many hours now I know there's lots of people that that uh, it doesn't make any difference, even if so, scripture that's already seared in their mind. Some of these, some people, you, there's the door shut. You, it, they're not going to, they're not going to study, or they're not going to take any correction, uh, and they don't understand. It's not me that's correcting them. It's me giving the scripture that will correct you. See, there's nothing I can do. The Spirit, the Father. The Son quickens who He wills. So, but we preach the gospel. Of course, the gospel was given to Abraham. Just like grace, where all of this cliches about the church age, the grace age, we're in the uh, age of grace. Well, the, the age of grace started when God made the promise with Abraham in Genesis 12. You, that's uh, when He promised Abraham. Uh, he promised a land covenant. He promised uh, promised him a son, Isaac. And so that's that's the promise or the gospel or the divine message from the Father. And God, and even Paul says that God gave grace to Abraham. That's where the grace age started, not at Pentecost. And, the, and now you can tell people that, and you can show them even Paul's teaching and all that, but some people's minds are seared, and they will not listen, no matter what you do, or a, a people that, that give people the text and say, go study it for yourself. And it, sometimes it makes them mad, or they just cut them right off, and we understand that. We're to endure. We're to uh, keep pressing forward. Uh, so, uh, but... And to, 
today's study, I'm going to talk about this hard picture of the rapture. And if, when you come to understand, there was a rapture or harpizzo 2,000 years ago, and it was not Jesus by himself. So that's going to be kind of our theme. Now, if you understand, and there's a lot of people out there that do, they know what I'm talking about, uh, then you know what this Christ coming from with the first reach from heaven to Harpizzo wraps out the body or the rest of the church. And that's us, the body of Christ. We're, we're not the whole body, people. I want to show you that in a few minutes. We're not the whole body. We're part of the body. The first fruits were the first part of his body. So uh, we'll get started. But let's go with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come into being on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us for our debts. We forgive our debtors. Lead us not in testing, but deliver us from the wicked one. For thy kingdom is the power, is the glory, for the ages of ages. In Christ's name we pray. And praise our Father God. Okay, so let's pick it up here. And uh, let's go to Romans, the 15th chapter. And let's, let's look at verse 4. For whatsoever things were aforetime as before were written for our instruction, our learning that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we possess, might is not in the text. There's no might in the Greek text. There's no mites or maybes. So, so you know, they stick this stuff in there, but that's, that's not in there. But have, that means possess, Echo, it means to hold to or possess. And what is it that we hold to? Hope. Now, what is this whole thing about? Now, this is this is the same word as the blessed hope, people. This is the same word right here that you have these people uh, uh, preaching the rapture that we're longing for his blessed hope. All right, well, let's go to that and uh, Titus 1.9, I think it is. Let's see, Titus one. Let's see, I know it's in Titus, let's see. Okay, uh, uh, so to talk, able to doctrine both to sword. Okay, that's convinced. The gang, that's the ones that speak against it. That's the same word in Simeon's prophecy, the contradict. Uh, but they, uh, Titus 2. With the blessed hope here that they preach a lot, we're we're longing for our they for our blessed hope. Uh, uh, yeah, it's two eleven for the grace be God that bring us salvation has appeared to all men, Jew Gentile, teaching us, and of course grace teaches us how to live, uh, deny ungodliness and worldly lust. That's the lust of the flesh that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of uh, the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, that looking for that blessed hope right here. Now, see, they all teach, but see, they don't know what the blessed hope is. Now, I want to, you got to get to this, people. Even if, if some are listening to this and, that you don't want, you're kind of shutting this out, forget, write down the scriptures or follow me through the scriptures. You might not, not, might not like my delivery because I'm Southern and my English is not all that good. Don't forget about all that and just, just contemplate on the scriptures I'm giving you and where, where we go to in the scriptures to prove the scriptures, okay? So now, what did Paul say? We, the Old, the Old Testament scriptures, and prophets and all that, that was for our instruction. That's for, that's for us uh, fruits of the Spirit that are born again. We have to have those scriptures. That's what Paul, all of them had, they had to have those scriptures, people. When Paul says, I preach the gospel, and this is the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 4, that how Christ died and was buried according to the scriptures, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe that, you, you're saved. But if you believe that in vain, you're not. But believe what? But see, they don't understand those scriptures 
as Old Testament. See, the hope, the blessed hope here in Jesus Christ, if you notice right here, uh, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our... Now, wait a minute. We got the blessed hope and the appearing. So is the blessed hope the appearing of, of the great God or, or, and our Savior? Yeah, he's part of it. But see, guess what the blessed... Now, now, if you, you don't know what the blessed hope is, you think it's only Jesus coming back to rapture you to heaven. Y'all got to get a hold of this, people. Because this, is, like I said over and over, this is pertinent to your salvation. And the whole world out there, and for hundreds of years, uh, the, all those uh, teachers and pastors, this, they preach this as Christ coming to rapture you out. Some, in the context of pre-trip. That means you're going to be raptured to heaven. And, and heaven for seven years, and Christ, uh, God's going to deal with the Jews for seven years of tribulation. When the Antichrist and the witnesses and all that is going to be the worst time on earth. And all of that they teach. I mean, they, I mean, they big time teachers, people. But there again, they are been handed down these uh, teachings, these heresies. They don't understand. They don't. They don't, they're not standing up there knowing they're giving you a damn little heresy because that's not, Satan is a deceiver. A deceiver deceives somebody that don't know he's been deceived. That's why he's good at what he does. But if you follow the scripture, now what I'm going to give you here is the scripture that's going to prove 110% that this blessed hope did not something that Paul just come up with, or Peter, you're born of this living hope, same word, uh, and it's stored up for you in heaven, uh, but we're going to go uh, through this, go back to the scripture, because, see, the, the first harpizo, I'm going to show you in just a second, happened 2,000 years ago. Now, see, if you understand that, then you know all about this blessed hope. You know all about the promise that God made to Abraham that was manifested. As I like to say, when God made that promise through grace, covenants and blessings, promise, divine message, man's covenant uh, with Abraham by grace, then you know that that come through Isaac and Jacob and Judah and Christ, and Christ was the first fruit, first rank in order of the first fruits. And you know that Rachel weeping for her children, Herod slaughtered them. That's all in the scripture. Jeremiah 31, 15, Matthew 2. If you just go connect the dots, go to Jeremiah 31, 15, go to Matthew 2, and Christ was born 33 days old. They have him going to the temple to offer the sacrifice. And Simeon stands there and looks at Mary and says, uh, uh, he blesses Yeshua because he lived to see the salvation as he raised him up there and blessed him to the Father. And he turned to Mary and said, Behold, this child is set for the crash. That means the slaughter of the holy innocent. And he will be the cause of that and also of the miracle of them, the resurrection of many in Israel. And that miracle, that miraculous power of God will be denied by the establishment. In other words, denied by Rome and the progenitors that were running the Sanhedrin, the biggest part of it. Now that was a prophecy when Christ was 33 days old. We got it all right there. But you're not going to hear it out there. Say if you if they if they knew Simeon's prophecy, they'd know Matthew twenty seven fifty two. And Christ cried out with a loud voice, gave up the ruach, and the temple was rent top to bottom, and the rocks were rent, the earthquake, and the graves opened, and many bodies that slept 
that's the ones Herod killed. And their own borders that was buried. And all of Judea and Bethlehem, their own borders where Herod slayed them. Through, through Rome. That is that is the dragon in heaven in Revelation 12 that's standing before the woman to devour her child, the man child, when it's being delivered, born. And the man child represents Christ. He grew up as a man. The child were taken as children. The 12 tribes of the children of Israel and they were the holy innocent slain, and they were the unleavened bread. That's why you have first. That's why you have Passover unleavened bread. They rehearsed that. You get all the leaven out, the sin out. Well, they never sin. They're holy. Uh, uh, Haggai set apart, and they come through those virgin women. That that is revealed in Simeon two twenty three and and Revelation fourteen three and four. Uh, so we have all of that, but. Even having all that, people still, instead of going and, and, and taking and the scripture being given to you for you to digest it and spiritually take it in and praise the Father, praise God, praise our, our Savior and what he did at the tree at the cross 2,000 years ago, they're going to just right, do what was prophesied they're going to just deny it. They're not going to teach it. They're, not, they're just going to put it out of the way. Well, I know uh, there was a, a friend of mine, and this happened to me, and I'm sure it's happened to people out here that understand this message, tried to talk to some of some people in the past or might be talking to some now. But they say, I know, I'm sure my salvation. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm this, I'm that, I'm whatever. I know, I know where I'm going when I die. Well, you see, I understand. We've all been there. But if you, if God is bringing a witness to you, and if you're interested at all, have any interest in learning or reading more about Scripture, which we should continually, it's never ending. It's, it's continually teaching and rebuking of the Father chastising his children, correcting us in the Word then uh, these verses will rebuke you. Then turn, believe them, and praise God and tell somebody about them. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, as long as we're breathing, and if the true word comes to us, he's not willing to talk about the body. He's not willing to, uh, for any, uh, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. See? So uh, notice right here. And so, so looking for that blessed hope. Now, now, Paul. Here we got hope. This this hope, blessed hope. And then we go back. Back. Let's go back to uh, Romans here. Let's go back to Romans. Uh, Romans fifteen four. And so, what do we say? Through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, that we possess hope. Now. Of the script, okay. Now, okay, people. So we're uh, we possess this hope. All right. What this this is not just something Paul wrote down here, and all of a sudden it had to come back because these scriptures before time were written for our instruction. See, now Paul got it from there, but but uh, we go back and we see exactly where Paul got this. Well. Notice, okay, 1680. The definition means anticipate with pleasure or joy, expectation, confidence, faith, hope. Now, it's, it is a much stronger word than just like, well, I hope it rains tomorrow. We need to rain. I hope it does. Well, that's not this word in the Hebrew or the Greek. It means fully, fully expect. 110% without a doubt it's going to happen. Okay, but let's go back. Let's go back and find this word right here. When I go to the apostolic, uh, I can do a right click here with my Asa word, and it'll take me to the Septuagint or the apostolic Greek in the Old Testament. Okay, so right here, there it is. We should have or possess hope okay so i'll do a right click and i'll go to the old testament 
Now we find this word hope in Deuteronomy uh, and, and the Old Testament is 76 verses, 80 matches in the Septuagint. Now it's also in the Hebrew. So, you know, but, but what we're looking for is in the context of what Paul was using or Peter was using in the New Testament. So let's go, let's look right here. Here we got Deuteronomy. Well, let's come on down. You ought to go look them all up. You'll find it in other things there in the scripture. But the main prophet to Judah 500 years before Christ was uh, Jeremiah. So let's go to Jeremiah and uh, let's pick up uh, Jeremiah here. There's Isaiah. Isaiah's got lots of uh, wonderful things there too about this same prophecy but uh, let's go to let me click on down here here we are in Jeremiah and we're going to come to here we are right here now people all y'all got your scripture Romans 15 5 uh, 15 4 excuse me uh, or uh, Titus 2 9 or any of them other hope messages that, uh, when Paul uses the word hope uh, go to Jeremiah 31, 17. So let's, let me click on it. Here we go. Here's Jeremiah 31, 31, 17 right here. People. Okay. Now notice, as, as I've told you before, when you back up to 31, 15, we have Rachel and Rama weeping for her children because they were not. They were not. They were dead. They were slaughtered. Now, when you go to, if you put out Jeremiah 31, just put down Matthew, the second chapter. And you'll see the wise man coming to King Herod, and then after they leave, and then, then he puts a degree out, because they don't come back tell him, and to kill all the two-year-old male Israelites in all of Bethlehem and the coast of Judea. Uh, remember the word coast, or the boundaries, coast boundaries is what it means, or borders, and so, uh, so we have uh, Herod fulfilling Jeremiah's prophecy in Matthew 2. Now, so wait a minute. Okay, what is Jeremiah prophesying at 16? Thus saith the Lord, stop your voice, Rachel, from weeping, and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your works, says Jehovah. And they shall return from out of the land of the enemies. Now, people, it don't take a... Uh, w once you go from Jeremiah 15 to Matthew, the second chapter, you see who killed them. You see, you see who slaughtered them was Herod and the soldiers of Rome there. Now, that, w that happened... When Christ was born. And see, in Simeon's prophecy, Simeon prophesied Jeremiah. He prophesied the resurrection of many in Israel, and that miracle would be denied. It'd be covered up, and you just follow the scriptures, and they paid large money to cover up the resurrection. See, but see, we don't when when it says uh when the soldiers seen everything happen and they come back and told the Pharisees and the elders, they said, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say they come and stole his body and we're going to deny that resurrection and then all these graves that broke open and everything, uh, we're going to, I'm going to tell you what to tell all these people and if anybody talks about that, well, you can imagine what kind of threat the families of people that were around there after that happened, and especially after they got up, and that's when they were saying paid the large money. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that's the land of the enemy. They, Christ was crucified. That was He was king of the Jews, but who was running Judea? The beast system, Rome. And who was in cahoots with Rome? Or Caesar? Who, who, who's the one that told Pilate that our God is Caesar? See? That was the Sanhedrin, the leaders of the Capus. 
See, and that's why Christ said, you're the devil. You're, you're the children of the devil. You're the tares. you a bunch of tares here. John 8, 44. You got to understand, but what I'm saying is, where did that come from? That come from Jeremiah. Jeremiah prophesied the slaughter of Rachel's children representing the children, those children of Israel. Now, we're not told how many. The only thing we're told right now is there's many of them. There was many saints that slept. Polis in the Greek, it means a great number. So, so we were told that in Matthew 27, 52. Uh, and Paul tells us that the first fruits of 1 Corinthians 15. So see, we learn bets and more and more, but where did this come from? Jeremiah said, your weep, Rachel's going to weep for her children, the prophecy. Herod's going to kill them. But then what is this next prophecy? Well, wait a minute. If he killed the children and slaughtered them, and they were not, and then when Christ died on the tree, their graves broke open, so they were dead in the graves, just what it said. He was resurrected, that guy the dead, and they were resurrected. They were raised from the dead. That's plural, in the genitive case, plural masculine. That's him and the first fruits. He's first fruit that was raised, begotten from the dead to start the new creation, people. We all died in Adam. So he, through Christ starts the new creation, starts with his body, that he's creating a spiritual, glorified heavenly beings because all us earthly beings died in Adam uh, the first Adam brought death and the last Adam or second man in heaven is brought the resurrection of the dead that's talking about him and them that's not talking about us in the future that's talking about the ones got up earth he got up see but I'm saying right here you've got it now what are you going to do with it I mean if, what do you do with if you think Jeremiah's a heretic and he's a liar, and he's not a prophet, then there's no sense in you studying anything. But if you're going to believe something by faith, and if it was for our admonition that these scriptures were wrote, go back there, and right here in 31.16, and don't cry anymore, Rachel, for Jehovah, the Creator, said, they shall return. Who is they that will return, people? I'm, getting, I'm going to get real technical here. That's all those that Herod slaughtered. Every one of them. We know there's many of them, but we're going to know the number of them because the Bible is going to tell us as we go further in the Scripture. They shall return. Now, how are they going to return? They're going to return just what Simeon said. They're going to turn by the resurrection. If you're dead... Resurrection means to come to living again after being dead. See? So they returned, got up out of their tombs after Christ's resurrection, and went into the holy city there, the scripture says, and all their, the women that had them some 30 years or so earlier that they were taken and slaughtered from them, they understood this hope message. They understood this prophecy, and that's why they were standing far off when Christ died. Because as soon as he died, guess what happened? The pains of death were released. He opened, the God opened the graves. And three days and nights later, when Christ got up, they got up. And they ascended to heaven. Now, that's the first rapture, and I'll show you that in just a second. Now, but watch. So we got 31.16. People, that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Now, you know now, the, all those many saints that slept, that got up, how, they got up after Christ's resurrection, and we know there's many, and that fulfilled Jeremiah 31, 16. And they are called Rachel's children. Rachel was the first love, the second wife, first love of Jacob that was changed, name changed to Rachel. And she had two children. And she died having the second one. She had the last two of the twelve. She had Joseph and Benjamin. And she died giving birth to Benjamin. But she is the one that's in this prophecy. This is like an allegory prophecy that Rachel 
why Rachel, not Leah, is because in the scripture, when you go back to Genesis, uh, Exodus, you see the lineage. God recognized Jacob's wife was Rachel, even though he was given Leah as his first wife. He worked another seven years for his second wife. But God, that's that's not how God recorded it. He said, he said, Jacob, Israel's wife, Rachel. But he also had Leah listed as having five of the sons, but not as his wife. See, not according to the way God looked at it. See, so, but I'm just saying, so Rachel is the one that's in the prophecy, not Leah. But the, but, but the point being is, people, we have no excuse. Now, what I'm saying to you is, if you're hearing this message, and anybody's ever talked about Matthew 27, 52, or, and, you, and they don't teach on it, preach on it, or they just push it aside and say, we don't, well, we don't have some old saints, and they, they might have died. We don't know where they went. We don't know their names. We don't know who they are. But it had to be important because they were raised after Christ. was like, oh, Yeah, it's important because guess what? That's what the blessed hope is. Now, now I'm going to show you where this hope comes from. Because we got to get it, we're going to get it from Jeremiah. We're going to get it from the scriptures, from the prophets. So right here, so so we got the first two uh, prophecies. Jeremiah was fulfilled two thousand years ago. Now let's look at thirty one seventeen. Now thirty one sixteen was fulfilled when Christ come and bought them back, and all of his disciples he chose, and Paul, and all the first believers. And every one of them understood and died for this message. They knew Christ bought back the first fruits of Israel. They all knew that, but they were being persecuted by the Judaizers because it threatened their authority. See, it threatened their inheritance. See, they killed Christ thinking and the first fruits that they would have that inheritance forever. See, and it looks like they've attained it, don't it? And it's going to look like they will when they kill the two witnesses till three and a half days later, and then and then it all changes, and then Christ is coming. But right here, thirty-one seventeen. Now look what look what's used here. And there shall be that word in the Greek shall be means future from where Jeremiah's future uh, to us, but it's getting real close. It means to come into existence. It will be. Hope to the last of you. Now, if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, and you're a believer and you believe that Christ came and died on the tree on the cross two thousand years ago, but you but what you what has been left out is the prophecy of the scripture. He died and raised, and when he got up, he raised his, God raised the first fruits of Israel, and he took them, raptured them, I'm going to show you, to heaven 2,000 years ago. Now, see, this is what's left out. But see, you're not, everybody teaches and preaches our blessed hope. Our hope is that Christ is coming to get us, rapture us to heaven. Well, when you understand this prophecy right here, uh, you'll understand how great an era these people are in. Not meaning that they're trying to be. It means that they've been deceived and passed down deceptive doctrine for years, generations. It's been passed down, picked up a little more, and, and picked up and picked up. But that's not what they were taught in the first century. That's not what they believed. That's not what took place. Now, I'm showing you right here. Now, see, see the word hope. That's the word hope Paul uses and Peter uses. It comes from Jeremiah because there's hope and full expectation. Notice right here, people. To the last of you says, now who is talking? Yehovah is the one that told Rachel to quit weeping. And yo, and this word, this is the rhema word that come to the prophet Jeremiah. And then in, and the next prophecy, the rhema word from Yehovah told Jeremiah to pen this down and write this for uh, future believers, uh, whether Jew or Gentile, that 
I am telling you, that hope will be for the last generation of believers that believe the same thing in this generation, the first generation, when Christ's generation. He said, says the Lord, notice, and shall return the sons to their borders. Okay, there it is. Now, I don't, I, I don't know how anybody, anybody can't understand 15 Rachel reaping for their, uh, the first fruits of the children that were slain by her, two-year-old males and under to get to Christ. I don't know how anybody can't say the Lord said Rachel don't reap because they're going to return through the resurrection on Passover when the graves opened three days later at nights when Christ got up. They got up. We got that recorded. And right there, the land of the enemies. And now we got 3117 and Jehovah is telling us through the prophet Jeremiah and there is full expectation. Now this is God's promise, people. That's why you got the capital L-O-R-D. This is the Father's full promise to the last generation of you before Christ comes back. Now notice, says, they shall, they shall return. Same word is here. They're going to return. But now where are they returning from? People. They are returning from heaven. When that trumpet goes off and the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ and those lives remain, those had a good report, will be called up to meet Christ in the air and so everybody with the Lord. Well, think about this. Now, that's the, that's the rapture they all talk about. But see, they're leaving out what it's about. It's not about... The rapture is going to be for those believers that believed what God told the prophets which Christ fulfilled when he died on the tree and the graves broke open. And right here we got it just as plain as people could, a nose on your face. See, but because a lot of people are so prideful, they've never seen this or never heard this, uh, especially coming from an old uh, Tennessee hick like me, what have I got doing talking about this? You don't, you're not going, the, all the seminaries in America, whether it's uh, the, uh, Dallas Seminary, uh, uh, Baptist, all of the different colleges, they don't, how many of them teaching this to their kids just going to whatever colleges or divinity school they're going to, people? You know, could you imagine? Could you imagine somebody sitting down at CNN that knew what Jeremiah and and you told and you had one of them uh, news media, Fox News, look at you and say, well, "You're preaching that Christ when he died and that he raised all those first fruits of Israel." Well, why is it only you? I mean, there ain't nobody else. We ain't ever heard such a thing. Well, right here it is. See, it's not something we're making up, people. It's coming out. People are going to hear this message. Because I'm not saying it because of me. It's because the Lord said right here, it will be full expectation to the last of you. Those have ears to hear and eyes to see because that's who he's coming to get. Because you're full expected to come back. Why are you full to expect to come back to get you to rapture, to snatch us up to meet him in the air? It's because he's already come and bought back his first fruits of Israel. That's already been fulfilled. You know, as, as I told somebody the other day, that is promises kept, and we are full expecting his promises he's fixing to keep real soon. See, that's the promises he made to Abraham through Christ. See, that's, that's God's covenant, promise, grace, salvation to Abraham. And, we're the, and if you believe, you are the children of Abraham. Believe what? Believe that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. It's just, uh, and, but we got it all in Scripture. 
people. It's not like it's all there. So now, right here, now very important. They're going to return to where, people? Where are they going to return? What, is it, what does Jeremiah say? To their borders. I've told you borders here is means a boundary line, a frontier region, a border, or a coast. It's it's uh, Orion. It's uh, we get our word horizon actually, but Orion now in predestination Romans eight twenty nine. To whom God foreknew, He also did predestinate. That is pro boundary. That means beforehand He knew the boundaries. The boundaries that they would be slaughtered. And the boundaries, why? Because that's the covenant of God, the promise of the covenant with Abraham. He gave Abraham all that land over there. And they were killed inside the coast and the borders of Judea. That was in Abraham, the land coveted that God made with Abraham, which has not been fulfilled yet, see. Now, we're the first fruits of the Spirit that hear this message and believe and are sealed with this promise, this whole promise message, gospel, by the Holy Spirit. See, you can't, you, it's, you're sealed with it. Once you hear the word, the truth, the gospel, of your salvation, you are, the Spirit seals the promise in you holy. Haggai set apart because we're the, we're the church, a part of the church. We're the called out. We're the set apart. Ecclesia. Just like they were. They, God set them apart and called them holy Haggai when they come through those women, virgins, wombs under the law. See? Now, we are called by the gospel. Hear and believe. See? So there's two callings. They were called they never heard no gospel. They was two years old. They were taken. But they come through women that were not tainted with men, for they were virgins. Now, there again, look at all of the controversy that the scholars, or especially Jewish scholars, so to speak, over the Hebrew language, over Isaiah's prophecy of uh, Christ being born of a virgin. And yet we got the scripture and reveals uh, in Revelation and also in Hebrews uh, and also Isaiah, the barren women, when Isaiah uh, 58.1, I think, uh, and also Paul reveals in Galatians, which I haven't got to yet, uh, when it says, cry out, O barren woman, uh, not in travail, but then that's a picture of of uh, Rachel. Uh, see, uh, excuse me, that's a picture of uh, Sarah. Sarah didn't have a kid and until after a womb was dead and Abraham's loins, and that's a picture of the Spirit bringing that about and the, the picture that he's a promised seed from heaven. And see, all the way through his seed, is we are our mother's heavenly Jerusalem. It's all of God's works, uh, at least any man can boast, not of works. And everybody thinks that has to do with the law. When I get into that, it's all been, it's all been uh, convoluted, people. You're saved by grace through faith. Wait till we get into that. Uh, because it's, it's all there, but it's just, it's all, when you leave out the, the the biggest part of why I cry, that's his first love. That's what he was telling Ephesus, people. You, some of you, I, you did this, 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 but I got a major problem. You've left your first love. What's his first love? His firstborn, his first love was Israel. He chose Israel and the first fruits of Israel. But see, they, they left that teaching. See, and that's what, it's all been left. See, but it's being revealed now because why? Why is it being revealed? Not because I'm saying I'm part of what's helping it to be revealed. 
Lord willing, give he's just praising the no man boasts before him. There's no boast coming here, people. But what I'm saying is it's because Jehovah told him, it says, it is for you in the end, the last generation. There will be some, there will be some that understand and believe this before the Antichrist stands up, and there will be some that will remain and survive during that period, and they won't taste death. They'll be changed the moment between the night. See, but Jehovah tells you right here, and the last of you says, Lord, the sons are coming back to their own border. Because when they come back from heaven to their own border, that's when we meet them in the air. That's our blessed hope. Now, there again, I'm going to move off this, but I want you to get this. There is your hope right there. That hope that Paul talks about and Peter talks about comes from Jeremiah 31:17. People, right there it is. There is the prophecy. That hope is them that returned through the resurrection 2,000 years, and there is where that's our blessed full hope that they are coming because our Father, the Creator, it's all of Him. He, uh, anop uh, he, he rules and reigns. Uh, it's incredible of of what has been covered up and hidden that's already been fulfilled and now it's this last part is about to be fulfilled. Our harpeds are to be snatched up to be Christ in there. But they're coming back to their own borders. Now see if I do a if we do a right click here, let's go back to borders. Let's go back to the New Testament and look where you find borders right here. Guess where you find the first word borders out of the Septuagint. Now for you Hebrew people, okay, let's go, let's, let me, 3117, let's click it over to the uh, English with the, the strong number in Hebrew. There it is, 8615 is the Hebrew word for hope. And there is hope in thy end. There, that's, there's the word end, that means the further end, the end of the 6,000 years or end of 2,000 years or two days says Jehovah that thy children shall come again. That means return. They're going to come again to their own border. Right there, the Hebrew word 1366. Okay, so now let's go to Matthew. Here's the Greek. It says come back and, and Herod kills the children. I told you if you go to uh, Jeremiah 31, 15, now Matthew 2, 16, we're going to, Jeremiah's prophecy is going to just come read it right here. Now, as I've said again, faithful, here is the, here's the Christmas message. You know, I celebrated Christmas a big part of my life because that's what I grew up with. I, I went to Easter Sunday and celebrated Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what was left out of that? What about all them Sundays that I went to and all these Sundays people go to? And there again, this is an admonishment. This is not judging them, people. You know, Christ is a judge, but we're commanded to rebuke or to put the Scripture out. But what I'm saying, think about everybody that goes to church on Sunday and they, or let's just say, and the, in argument's sakes, left the Sabbath to the first day of the week. But see, what about all the Sabbath worshipers, all the feast keepers, all the Torah observance, and they don't have no more idea who the first fruits of Israel was than, uh, than the denominational churches out there. So see, they're all throwing rocks at each other. Well, they all ought to repent and study the scripture and believe. And Christ will set you free. If the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. But you got to know who he come, and when he died on that tree, who he redeemed and bought back, and it's because of them we are full expecting because we're next. Why? Because we are the ones in the end understand that gospel that God preached or told Abraham and the promise of the covenants. And the Father keeps his promise. 
Even though it was a man covenant, he does not break his promise. Even though man breaks it, it's always broken. See, that's why it's no works of man, people. When you come, well, just remember this little thing I'm saying here when we go back to Ephesians 2, 5, 6, 7, and 8. We are saved by grace through faith. You're really going to be shocked to see what that grace or that salvation is. Okay, so right here, uh, so Herod kills us, but notice we find this word border. First time, right here. It's, it's translated coast, same word. And he slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the borders, the boundary lines, the coast, there from two years old and under, according to the time that they come and talk to Herod. So right here, so now see, they're coming back to their borders. Why? Because they are the first fruits, first rank in order, and they they are the inheritors of the promise that God made to Abraham through Abraham. And see, we're we have been grafted in by believing as first fruits of the Spirit, and we share in the same promises and blessings. What does that mean? That means they pick. When, when they come back, we meet them in the air, and then all with Christ sits his feet on the Mount of Olives and all his saints with him. All his saints. That includes us people. Okay, so right here is Jeremiah 31, 6, uh, 15. Now, as I said, I'm going to I'm going to give you the scripture so you don't uh, you can't say I mean uh, you need to go to these scriptures, people. Don't throw them and say, "Gosh, I ain't ever heard that." And nobody's ever go read them. Uh, so when you so Jeremiah thirty one sixteen, they come back to the land of the enemy. When did that happen? Matthew twenty seven fifty two. When Christ gave up the ruach, the graves broke open, and three days and nights later. Christ got up and they got up, went into the holy city. That's the land of the enemy, but it was in the enemy was in charge of the land. Now, why would Christ be coming back with them? And also we share in that covenant blessing, because he's coming back to get his inheritance. That's his. That's theirs. Boy, that don't sound good, does it, for all these kings and people trying to one world order and trying to rule the world and the enemy anti messiah coming on the scene and all that does it but let's see if that god keeps his promise because it's going to happen people but all that's got to happen and then christ comes back to take over all the kingdoms the kingdoms of satan of this world become the kingdoms of him and his anointed his christ okay now right here so we have uh matthew 27 52 we go on down here so this is jeremiah when you, all you got to do is write jeremiah 27, 52, 53, 54, right here. And the graves were opened, and they came out of the dirt, out of the tombs, out of the graves, after Christ's resurrection, went into the holy city and appeared unto. All right, now, Jeremiah 31, 16 is this prophecy right here. Now, Jeremiah 31, 17 is the blessed hope. It ain't happened, it's fixing to happen. But now, that's when we're raptured. Okay, now, right here, I told you, uh, of course, we have Christ telling them, I want to send to my God, their God, my Father, their Father. And we have all of this. Uh, what do you think? Uh, here's the blessed hope, and which we talked about. And, of course, Paul reveals this. Uh, but let's look what First Peter says. I mean, just to show you, we have where they're at by the by the apostles. They tell you where they're at. They tell you where you're, the blessed hope you've been born with, right here. And Peter, he gives probably the best uh, description of it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according with his abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto a lively, there it is, right, and got unto a lively, living, Hope. Okay, now, right here, if you got any mind, right here, Jeremiah 31, 15, 16, 17, right there it is. Right there, that's where Peter got that. 
He just didn't come up with that. He got that from the prophets. See, but see, if you believe you've been born again of the Spirit that's revealed that scripture to you that you believe by faith, and that's your salvation. See, that's what the whole that's what this that's what the cross of Christ dying on the tree was to save the first fruits, to buy them back under the law and take them to heaven, and that message would go out, and we believe. Now, our hope is, and full expect, they're coming back, because when they come back, they're going to get us the first fruits of the Spirit. They're the first fruits of the 12 tribes of Israel. As I said, Dan was left out, Manasseh 12,000 was added from Manasseh. But, that's the 144,000. But right here, so, so, blessed be, according to, he's begotten us to the lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Echai of the dead. See, Echai out of the dead is them. That's who? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Echai from the dead. Their graves break open. Christ died, he's on the tree. The graves break open. All them many saints with their graves open or asleep or dead. Christ is dead. They put Christ, take him down off the tree, Put him in the tomb, and three days and nights later, when he gets up, they get up. That's why he is predestinated, 829, to whom God foreknew he did predestinate, foreknew the boundary. He foreknew that, foreknowledge of the boundary, that Christ be the firstborn of many brethren. The many brethren is the many saints that got up that were slaughtered in his name. The twelve tribes of the children. Children of Israel. Not the twelve tribes of the men of Israel. The twelve tribes of the children. They weren't but two years old and under. So right here is Peter saying this. And I notice, now where does he say this hope is laid up at? Here's our inheritance. Oh, where is our inheritance at? Well, it's incorruptible, it's immortal because they were immortal when they were raised to immortality. They were undefiled and they faded not away and they are kept, preserved, oh me, right there, where? In heaven, right there. Right there, people, right there. It is. I don't know, I mean, uh, unless Peter's a liar, right, or heretic. And, and now, who are they reserved and kept in heaven is for who? For you that believe. Now, as you see this word, for you, well, what did Jeremiah's prophecy say? What did he say? That hope is reserved. It's up there, and it's for you in the end. For you in the end. See, it's when they come back, it's for us that believe this. And, of course, Peter now died believing this, and that's the man. They will be the dead in Christ will rise they will be raised when they come back. But we're in the end, the slash generation people. It's amazing. Now, how is it kept? I wonder what keeps all this intact, who are kept by the power of God, oh, through faith. Oh, yeah, I was saved by grace through faith, right? Okay, unto salvation, ready to be revealed. And what did Jeremiah say? The last of you, that's Ekatos. The last time, the last season. See, it's all right here. Now, it's so amazing, people. But what I want you to see is in heaven. Now, now, before I forget it, I get to go on to so many places I want to show you. And the, the scripture is so full of. Now, let's go to Revelation 12. Now, we got the woman, and I told you the woman in heaven clothed in the sun, Christ, under her feet is uh, the moon. That's a picture of of the false light. That's the pit, the Babylon is a picture of the moon. Uh, it gets its reflection from the true true light, the sun. Uh, but but this woman had a head, a crown of 12 stars. And I told you the 12 stars are the 12 tribes. That's the crown. Now that's the same crown. Now what's amazing is, Paul says in 2 Timothy 2, 4, preach the word in season, out of season. Rebuke, admonish, comfort. For, for the time is coming when they will not endure sound doctrine. 
So see, sound doctrine is, there, is, is all what we've been talking about. It's not some other, it's Christ's doctrine, sound doctrine. But what is Paul warning Timothy? They're not going to endure this. They're not going to endure. They're going to, they're going to pass and move from it. But then Paul says, but I have, he's run the race. He's kept the faith, the faith of this gospel. He hadn't been drawn away and been perverted by all the heresies that he and Peter and Christ and the iniquity that was coming in. But then Paul said this, I have a crown of righteousness that's laid up for me in heaven, uh, not only for me, but all those that long his appearing. Well, wonder what the crown of righteousness that's laid up in heaven. I just think, you know, you all know exactly what he's talking about. So, uh, that, that crown of righteousness that Christ got the victory over, that's not... Uh, the golden crown of kings, that's a, that's a wreath that you that would you would win when you won the prize. And Christ got the victory over what? Not death, hell, and the grave. He got the victory over Hades and the grave. Not they ain't death, hell, and the grave ain't in there, but they, that's what they preach out there. See, all right, so right here. And she being with child cried, travailing at birth and pain to be delivered. So what child do you think is going to, uh, that she's uh, going to deliver here, crying, now in Revelation 12, 3, but now we have this great red dragon, seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. But if you notice here, these crowns right here, people, are demon, a crown uh, about his head. But the woman that has her crowns, this is a different word, crown, here. That's 4735. That means a wreath, a step over. It's a badge, a royalty, a prize. See? See, it's not a worldly crown. Satan's got that because he's the prince of the power of this, this world. He's all these kingdoms, these proud kingdoms that he's over. All right, so right here, uh, and, his, and we see his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them. Now, and she stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, who was standing there to devour uh, Christ? King Herod, right? And who did he devour? He said, go kill all the two-year-old males to get to Christ. But he didn't get to Christ until it was time for Christ to go to the tree and die. See? So, and, and, and of course, when that happened, then the power of God showed up. See, God, you know, in Hebrews it says that God, it was the gift of God. Well, the gift of God means sacrifice offering. See, so the first fruits was offered through the, their, for the death. But see, that's not the, God's not the God of the dead, people. Through Christ, and Christ uh, uh, died, and three days and nights later, there was a resurrection to Christ, and through his resurrection, with the resurrection first fruits. So, right here, all right, now we see in 12 5, right here, she brought forth, and now we have a man child who is to rule all the nations, that being Christ, with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up. There's her, her pigeon, but there it is in the yellow. That's what I said. If you understand 2,000 years ago, that this child represent the first fruits was caught up to God in his throne. There's heaven. Well, Peter's already said they're in heaven. Paul says they're in heaven. Uh, Christ said, Mary Magdalene, go tell my brethren that I send I and them to my God and their God and my Father and their Father. We've got all this scripture. So what I'm saying, people, if you understand this that happened 2,000 years ago, which was Jeremiah's prophecy, 3116, then you'll understand this, the ones that they all out, all I'm talking about. Now, this is what Paul tells us. Here it is. And he uses the word hope. Isn't it amazing? Right here. So when you come to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, but I would not you be ignorant, brethren, concerning which them that are asleep, that means they're, they're dead, but they're asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which possess no hope. 
what what is that people now you should fully understand this hope here goes right back to Jeremiah's prophecy. So you don't possess that. Now, you can't possess it unless you hear it and believe it and then you're sealed with it. You're sealed with that promise. That's what the promise that God made to Abraham. See, that was the good message. That was the gospel. Through Abraham would come the promised seed Isaac, would come Jacob, would come the 12 tribes through Judah, the promised seed Christ, and Christ would buy back those at the tree, the ones that were killed in his name, that Herod slaughtered, Jeremiah's prophecy. So right here, so when you see this right here, it is not talking about what they say well, you hadn't accepted Jesus, so you don't have no hope. You ain't accepted him, let him in your heart, change you, said the sinner's prayer. You hadn't done that, so you're not saved. Well, see, all of them that's done that, now, now when I say this, I say this with meekness and with great endearment towards anybody out there, because I've been there, we've all been there. But you're not saved either. Because that's not the hope. The hope is he resurrected his first roots 2,000 years ago. They're in heaven and they're coming back to their own borders. Now, if you believe that, then you possess the hope Paul's talking about here. See, so you've got to know when Christ, who he got when he went to the tree and died, but who, he, who was Harpizzo, raptured to heaven, 2,000 years ago, if you understand that, then Paul is telling you exactly what's fixing to happen to you when they come back right here. He's giving you play by play exactly. See, And also in this, it's been revealed that I've put up several videos, and this with them is two witnesses. See, that's all left out, but that's in this scripture. That's in this prophecy right here. So uh, hopefully people... Uh, there's just so much here, and we are, time is drawing nigh, people. As Christ said 2,000 years ago, repent for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. It is really nigh at hand, people. And so, you know, we have to go over and over, and these scriptures are wrote and they're sealed by the Holy Spirit, to seal this promise in our spirit and Christ's spirit, which we're born of, see. And so, and it's so paramount. Uh, and my prayer, of course, is the kingdom's prayer for everybody, that God's will that you enter into the kingdom because you that's what the prayer is about because his kingdom is in us and it's about to be manifested when he comes back. But we have all of this prophecy that you make sure of your salvation. Now, uh, Lord willing, in the next video, but there's if you've heard this uh, verse, that Jesus Christ is the <clears throat> author and the finisher of your faith, or my faith. Well, see, the, all, see we're saved by grace, through, but faith in what? And faith in what he come and got. That's his first love. See, and we and he said, unless you repent and do those works, what does that mean? That those works means bring forth what I've just done, I, the scripture. It's not any work I did. It's to bring forth this gospel for people to hear, the true gospel, not the other gospel. See, that's the works we're to return. That's what Christ was warning in Ephesus, that you have left your first love. That's what he come to do. You've left that behind and went on and brought in all this other stuff. And he's saying, unless you return and do, bring forth these works, I'm going to remove the candlestick, which means I will take the Spirit from you. See, and what does Paul say? Cease not the Spirit. Do not cease the Spirit. Now, to understand truly really what that means. So Christ is the author and the finisher, see, he's the author 2,000 years ago 
because once we heard it, we believe. But he's going to finish it because what is faith? Uh-oh, the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Well, that evidence is fixing to be seen when we meet him in the air. And so he will be the author of this faith 2,000 years ago. That your full hope, expectation, but when, when he comes, then he will finish it because we'll be changed a moment and we'll meet him in the air there and we'll be with the Lord. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness your spirit. We trade the scripture for one another. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, and come a king. Amen.